This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to go a little bit in depth into the audio ducking feature that was recently introduced inside of Media Composer version 8.6 because when I went back and I took a look at what's new in 8.6 my tutorial I noticed the explanation seemed a little bit convoluted, a little bit confusing and then I got a comment on the tutorial from Dave Schweitzer who actually asked a very good question. Basically what he wants to know is, because of the audio threshold settings, could one edit in a VO clip the entire length of the sequence, which contains pauses in it or silence, and have the ducking still function? Because when I did the original tutorial, I had edited in little pieces of VO that basically were ducked upon every time they were gotten to. And in a lot of cases, you don't work like that. Maybe you, you know, have an hour long video that somebody has sat there and they've given a voiceover dialogue record to for the entire hour. And you don't want to go in and add in all these segments of blank to get audio ducking to work. What you'd like to do is just literally drop the VO in and have it work for the entire way through as far as audio ducking goes. Well, in this lesson, we're going to get in-depth in audio ducking. We're going to explain all of these features in layperson's terms so that they make sense, so that this way audio ducking is going to function the way you need it to every time you work with it. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I've laid out the scenario that Dave described in his question. So basically what I have is I have one VO track then we're just going to assume stretches on for hours and hours. In this case, it only stretches on for about 30 seconds. And what I've done is I've gone and I've left the gaps in the audio, you know, much like we were doing in, you know, a DVD commentary or something like that. And we needed the volume of the commentary to come up and come down based on where the voiceover track is laid in. So let's get into the audio ducking feature. and Let's go in depth into each one of the parameters and we'll talk about how it works. Some of them don't need a lot of explanation, but a couple of the other ones do. So let's do that right now. Now, a couple ways that we can get to audio ducking. For me, I always like to just have it as a shortcut. You can have it mapped to your keyboard if you'd like. I actually have it mapped to the composer window right here, audio ducking. Now, if you don't have it mapped to the timeline or to the composer window, you can always find it in the timeline dropdown right here. Okay. Now I'm just going to close some of these windows here because I don't need the audio mixer for what we're doing. I am going to keep my VU meters available to me here just because we're going to need them to explain what is going on with audio ducking. I'll just position it sort of about here and we'll just move the bin over a bit just to make sure it doesn't interfere. Okay, so let's call up audio ducking. So here we go. Now, the first thing that's obviously important to consider is have you marked an in and out point through a specific duration of the audio in your timeline? And do you want the audio ducking feature to use just the in and out points and what's between it as its reference to where it's going to do its ducking? If that's the case, you're going to use the marks that's right here. Now, to be honest, you could get in and save settings if you want, but I just I find that just a little bit strange because the audio ducking in most cases you might have audio on, you know, music on different channels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're gonna have to get thing, get in and set things up, you know, in a lot of cases differently every time. If you don't, you always have things set up the same way. By all means, get in and save a setting for it. Now, next area. This is where the real setup happens. Now, the thing that I found kind of a little bit confusing as to why they would have put dialogue and music. This is audio ducking we're talking about. The audio doesn't necessarily need to be music. It could be sound effects. It could really be just about anything. Uh, but I guess they had to put music in to put something in there. I probably would have put, you know, dialogue and possibly alternate 
audio track or something like that. But again, like I said, it doesn't need to be necessarily music, okay? Now, one thing that I also want to point out, uh, and this is something that I see a lot that editors do, and I'm not really sure why they do it, uh, but that's basically, you'll see that I have my voiceover laid out in my timeline as a single mono audio track. In a lot of cases, I see editors put in two audio tracks for a voiceover. Well, my voice is just one. It is mono. There is only one voice track. There really is no stereo, you know, feature to it. I mean, unless I pretty much had two microphones I was moving back and forth with. So to be honest, if you can only put one VO track or one narration track in your timeline, it's just going to save you a ton of audio tracks, especially if you get in, you have like five, six, seven, eight, nine tracks of dialogue. You really would rather be only dealing with nine as opposed to be dealing with 18 tracks. Okay. Now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit past the, uh, past the dialogue track parameters and the advanced features. We're going to come back to that. Let's talk about the music track parameters and basically they're broken up into two categories, the attenuation and the ramp time. Now these you know, are fairly self-explanatory. The attenuation is what is the audio going to be ducked down to? What volume are you going to have your final audio duck at? Now, in a lot of cases, if you're bringing in music off CD, somewhere around minus 10 to minus 15 on average is probably where you're going to go to. If it's not coming off CD and it's coming, maybe it's a live record or something like that, that value might vary. Uh, but in a lot of cases, if you're always getting your audio from the same source, you can most cases set that and forget it. The ramp time is how long do you want the actual dip to take? Now, I normally like to have mine relatively quick, so I have it, you know, six frames. Now, I am working in a 2398 frame per second timeline, so that represents a quarter of a second right there, six frames, okay? If I wanted to stretch it out a bit, I might push it to a half, but I think anything longer might be a little bit too long, okay? Now, let's talk about the dialogue track parameters and what's going on here. Now, I'd like to talk about threshold first, and I'd like to show you how it works you know, and, and use that sort of as a, a starting point to explain how the hold time is going to work. So right now I've set my threshold to be minus three dB. Now I'm not going to do anything else right now ex except tell Media Composer to duck. Okay. So basically by setting the threshold at minus three and telling Media Composer to duck, what it's going to do is it's going to take a look at the audio on track one and it's going to figure out at what point the audio peaks at minus three or above. And it actually is kind of actually interesting to see this because this is a very visual way to get an idea of where your audio is peaking. I can see the audio peaks above minus three right here, right here, and right here. Now, obviously minus three is way too high for the purpose of what we're doing, but it's a good way to start to see how audio ducking works. What the threshold value is doing is it's using the value that you enter as the point to say, okay, anything that goes higher than, you know, in this case it was minus three, but let's just use a, you know, a number like minus 12. Anything that's at minus 12 or above, we need to use that as our quote unquote clipping point to dip our audio down and go underneath. Okay. So I'm just going to undo what I just did and let's go back to audio ducking for a second. Okay. Now, normally the first thing to do is you're going to come back and you want to sort of figure out what is a good you know, uh, a good audio value to have your threshold set up. Let's just play this for a second here. So I thought for fun to test and it, the I audio think minus 14 might be a good value. Sort of right here, a lot of this Wiki audio page. peaks above minus 14. Now you're going to notice that in here, it drops off a bit. And this is okay. We'll come back and talk about this in just a second. So let's get back into audio ducking. I'm going to set that threshold to be minus 14. I'm not going to talk about hold time for right now. We're just going to set this to be minus 14 and I'm going to say duck. Now, as soon as I do that, you're going to notice that the duck has now almost seems to have done what we want it to do. You'll see it ducks down right at the start where basically my audio hits minus 14 and above and pretty much does it the entire way through. Okay. Except what happens here is that you'll notice that the duck comes back up midway through this audio track here. Because what ends up happening if you watch the audio track is it's above, it's minus 14 or above all the way through here until it hits here where it goes below that. Watch this. That's the audio ducking feature okay, here we go. that I would read from the Media Composer wiki page. And you can see right there, it peaked probably somewhere around minus 17 and a half. So Media Composer knows that because it's looking at the audio. It said, oh, well, guess what? Your duck goes below minus 14. Well, guess what? That's where the duck then is going to come back up. So if I needed that value to not do that, there's one of a couple ways that I could do it. I could adjust the threshold value or what I could do is just undo that 
And let's just add a couple edit points. And I'm just going to raise this audio track up a little bit. Let's put it up at about, I don't know, minus six. I think that's pretty, or plus six. I think that's pretty good. Because you'll see now how much the audio Media jumps. Composer Wiki page. Perfect. Now, I also do want to give a big shout out to Wikipedia. This is actually the Media Composer Wiki page that I'm actually reading uh, for the purposes of this tutorial. But let's now go back and do that that duck, the duck again, we'll leave it at minus 14 and I'll say duck. Remember, it was here before, now it's not anymore. It's actually stretched out. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on here um, in just a second. So let me actually come back here and let me just show you here. We got this at the minus four. Let's actually set this to be 24. We'll leave that at minus 14 and I'll say duck, okay? That's much better, okay? This is actually a better visual representation of what's going on because before the duck happened here, and now the duck moves down to the end and starts to dip up right here where the audio trails off below, okay? Now with what just happened, this is actually a good time to get in and start talking about that hold time and what exactly that means. Because you'll notice that when I did this before, I had to change the hold value because it was set at something like 96, I think. Let's go 96 and just say duck, okay? Now, there we go, okay? So you can see that it doesn't ramp it back up here, it doesn't ramp it up here, but it does ramp it up here. So what exactly is going on with this duck now, okay? What does this hold parameter exactly mean? Well, what Media Composer is going to do with that hold parameter is it's going to, as it's going through the audio and analyzing where that threshold value of minus 14 is, at the very last point that it peaks, at minus 14, that's gonna be its stop point. It's then going to, and I'll just undo this here, it's going to look at the hold time, which right now is set to be 96 frames or three seconds, okay? And it's gonna take a look down the timeline to see if any audio exists any farther down the timeline than that 96 frames that is minus 14 or above, okay? So if I was to come to about here and go plus three, it's pretty close. I get a little bit of audio here, but I don't know exactly where that reference point is, but it could be taking a look at where the audio starts to come up here. In here, if I come back and go plus three, Okay, we got nothing. We got silence all the way through here. This gap is actually longer than this gap. Okay, so what it's going to do if I come back here and I say 96 frames and I say duck, is it's going to, because it thinks that there's something going on with the audio here, probably because I bumped this back up, is that it's going to leave the duck down all the way. But here, because from this point here, if we look down 96 frames, there's no audio here. It's silence. It's below that threshold value. So it thinks, okay, I need to bring the audio back up at this point. So that brings up a very interesting question. How do I then get this to duck properly so that it basically ducks here, it rises back up through here, it ducks down here, comes back up here, and we might want it to duck down here as well. But that's a little bit short, so I don't know if I'm going to want to do that. Let me show you. What we're going to do is I'm just going to pick sort of an arbitrary value here. Let's come down here. It's not going to be an arbitrary value. We're going to come down to about here. And that is about two seconds, okay? So that's about 48 frames. I think I might even go a bit less than that. Let's go with 36 frames. So basically, what it's going to do is it's going to look from basically minus 14, that last peak of minus 14, it's going to look down 36 frames. If there's no audio there, it's going to bring everything back up. So what it should do is it should bring the audio back up here. Here is questionable. I don't know if I got 36 frames here. It's going to be pretty close, okay? Definitely 36 frames here, not here. So what it should do is bring the audio back up here and back up here. Here, question mark. We're not, not sure if it's going to do that. I don't think it's going to, but let's see. Let's put in a value of 36 frames and let's say duck, okay? So there you go. Look at that. It did do it here. So that's good. So take a look. So it's duck the audio here. It's brought it back up for this stretch to here. It's even brought it back up here, which is also very handy, which means that somewhere in here, minus 14 is not happening. It's probably even about here to probably about there, okay? And that's pretty darn close. It's actually a couple frames more, as you can see, 114 instead of 112. So that's why it brought that audio back up. It then, of course, brings it back up here along this huge stretch here, and it doesn't bring the audio back up here, which I wouldn't want it to, because the duration here is only about eight frames. It's not even close to that 36 frame uh, barrier that we set up in the hold parameters. So this is how we can now start to get in and analyze how we want to actually do our audio duck. If I wanted to get really crazy and I wanted to make sure that this was included here, I'd set that value to be something super low. Like, let's just undo this here. I'd probably set it to be probably about a value of six. Okay, so I'll just undo all this here. 
Okay, there we go. And let's go audio duck. Let's put this like right down here. What's the lowest hold time? 12, can I even do six? No, 12 is the lowest I can do it. I'm gonna say duck. Yeah, and it did it, you can see. Right there, did it there, and it even did it here, which again, like I said, that's a little bit short, but you get how this is gonna work. For me, I found that happy medium in here, which was 36 frames. At 36 frames, at a threshold of minus 14, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It dipped the audio right when it started, brought it right up when this one was done. It brought it down here in between this shorter gap. It's not that short, but it left the audio duck down here at this very, very short gap that I wouldn't want to bring it up for anyways. So hopefully me going in and explaining this a little bit more in depth is going to help you not have to do any more extra work than you should have to when using audio ducking because it is a fantastic feature that I want you to start to use. You just got to put a little bit of thought into it by taking a look at your VO, figuring out what that threshold value is, and then figuring out how long the gaps are that you're going to want to set as far as that hold value goes so that it's ducked when you want it to be, it's brought back up when you want it to be, and it doesn't do anything crazy in little short gaps like this where you're going to want to keep that audio nice and low. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at Video Guys. Dot com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.